All right, new uh, new recording Rig. setup is live, like again. But like last week, it was just I changed how things were connected. Yeah. This time, it's actually a different computer that's doing the recording. Wait, it's the computer that we did like Vesperia on, and um, um, what else did we do on that computer? Some of the fighting games, I think. I think we might have finished Nep. Tunia on it, maybe? Possibly. We didn't use it a ton. Lumina we did on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then it's, like, the thing that I've been doing, like, all of the Thursday streams off of for basically ever, but... Yeah, so this thing should be pretty strong, but... Substantially more so than the laptop, yes. Yeah. Quite a bit more so. Like, at this point, we should have absolutely no fucking trouble capturing the PS4 at 60 if we want to. I mean, or is the lap- that'd be good. Or is the laptop fucking choked really uh, hard if I tried to do that? Okay, so that might make a difference. Yeah. Me. So yeah, this is probably in you know 1080 60 now as opposed to 1080 30, which it wasn't. Not that it matters for a visual novel, but you know. Whatever. Well, yeah. Anyway, Broom Girl is being yes. stern. Whatever her name is. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Sure. I don't think she's been introduced by name. Oh, she has. Oh. Yeah, that happened last time. Having grown up in this city herself, she was irritated by virtually everything Sojiro (laughs) said and did. Sounds like Aoko. Nevertheless, she still treated him like an equal. Uh. For some reason. (laughs) Introducing him to his current job was just one example of her sincerity. I see. How unusual. Really? Really unusual is the answer. Sojiro couldn't find the words to explain his situation, but that did not stop him from trying. You see, I've been kidnapped, imprisoned, and forced to take poison multiple times per day in order to keep the previous poison from killing me. Right. By two witches. So anyway, how's your day? (laughs) Yeah. There were no problems that the mad bear to speak of. Well, that's good. He liked it just as much as his other job at Uatatsu, the fishmongers in the shopping district. Oh. In fact, his problem had nothing to do with work at all. Right. Yeah. No, his problem was a certain (laughs) blue bird that would not stop pecking at him recently. Yeah, Robin really does not like him. (laughs) Okay. That's really weird, but yeah, that's not, like, world-ending bad. How are you so short? <laughs> I know! What tiny. are you, like, four foot nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. You don't actually usually see them completely straight on at the, at the screen. Yeah, right? It's usually at an angle. I mean, technically, her body's at an angle. Yeah, it is. Because, t- like, tilted her, her a little boobs bit. are pointing, like, slightly towards... You, you can see the lip- like camera left. Yeah, you can see the lapel. She's a little bit tilted, but I guess they're supposed to just be walking through the park at the camera. Yeah. It's fucking blue, and a robin. <laughs> you know. Apparently, it's a thing. Yeah, a rare thing in like Africa or whatever. Like it's not. I thought a- it was the UK, but. In... Although apparently. There, there is the possibility. I think Mar pointed this out. I mean, I, oh, from what Robin Hood's essentially? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I saw the blue bird there. I figured it was like some kind of bird. And then Alco getting <clears throat> like fucking wrecked by the doll has been on this stun thing this yeah. whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. Words alone were not enough to convey the bird's plump body or the sound of its chirping. <laughs> Mountain blue bird. For a blue jay? Yeah, it's a blue jay. It's a blue jay. It's a a blue jay. Yeah, never mind. Of course, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. 
Why would you know about painted chicks? <laughs> well, I did hear something that sounded like a thousand of them in the, yeah. in the dining room the other day, but... And then my roommates told me absolutely nothing was wrong. Don't worry about yeah. it. Stop asking questions. Right. So I immediately stopped asking questions and went back to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't have a mate, huh? Or a bird. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. 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 Her words were perfectly kind, but he could hardly sympathize with the creature after all the painful pecking to which it had subjected him. Yeah, really. He wouldn't have called the bird lonely, either. Yeah, it's got Alice. Uh, well, it's not all of him. Whoa, okay, actually that Is that your... Is that your life at your job? Just getting assaulted by dumpster crows? Yeah, taking out the garbage. Oh, oh, there's something else too. For example, had reminded him of the mystery of the disappearing birds at the mansion. Ah, yeah. A stranger than strange event. Oh God, you're mentioning that. Right, that's Broad as not a mountain. What's a hill? <laughs> Wait, you heard he moved out? Well, he's from the booty, so he probably feels at home there. Just <laughs> Probably aren't supposed to complain that much. It took 30 minutes to reach town on foot. The 40 minutes to the nearest convenience store would be the real kicker for most people, but for Sojiro it was no inconvenience. Yeah. The real problem was the dark forces beyond human understanding that lurked within the grounds. Seems about right. <laughs> それより今の話だ。町には鳥が少ないと言ったけど、どうして単に環境に適応できなかったのよ。何鳥の話には随分と食いつくわね。静き動物好き<笑> <うん。鳥の話には随分と食いつくわね。笑> okay. <笑> そう、her statement could hardly be more self-contradictory. Minutes after telling him to be nice to a bird that attacked him, she was now claiming she didn't even like animals. Yeah. Please, teach me about the birds. And also maybe some bees. I don't know anything about them either. <laughs> Can't take a hint. Oh, can't. You are being very patient with him. This is a weird shot. Yeah, I know, just Okay, game. Loafer fetishists, I guess? I don't know. Right. You see, thousands of years ago, we had an evil god who... Oh, wait a second, no, that's Higurashi. The way Kamari addressed them was of note. Whether she liked them or not, she seemed to at least have some respect for them. But yeah. 
ヤブカが多いってことで小さな川の流れを変えたり町中コンクリートで塗り固めちゃえば鳥的にはお手上げよう虫も森も少ないんじゃもう山に逃げるしかない彼らは故郷を追われてこの森から山に移った人間にとって都合のいい町は鳥たちが生きるコロニーにはなりえないからそんなことぐらいで減るものかその姿を見なくなるぐらいにそこまで極端じゃないとは思う。現にあなただって、ムクドリを見てるでしょ ?Yes, on a hill outside of town. Yeah. <笑>比較の問題よ。町には人間が多いから、鳥の姿は余計気象に感じるだけ。Yeah, there, たまに見かけるだけで、珍しいと思えるぐらいね。But I don't like animals. 確かに。<笑>じゃあ、鳥は町からいなくなっただけで。あの山に oh, don't you start calling it a mountain too? <laughs> yeah. Humans might not be able to see them in day to day life, but they were alive and well nonetheless. Their habitat and their lifestyle changed with the times, but they never truly disappeared. Sojiro's sense of relief was sharply disrupted by a serious look from Kumari. Well, no, there's like. Well, bigger birds. Well, I mean, yeah. like mountain lions. It's not totally safe, yeah. yeah. It's not totally safe, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, that's like the, the white pigeons that went extinct, like around 1900 or something like that. Yeah. Ryokobato? Precisely. So yeah. That's, that's the point. Yes, that is exactly so, it. Ryokobato. Taichou wa 40 cm hodo mo aru, wo gata no kirei na tori. Osu no tsubasa wa fukai ao iro de, mune wa azayaka na enji iro. Orange iro no me wa. 嘘みたいに愛らしくてその羽は時速100キロで長い距離を旅するの Her voice had a certain tenderness to it She was daydreaming about birds she'd never even seen in the flesh Yeah 北アメリカにいた鳩でね春は南から北へ冬は冬越えのために北から南に移動するの That sounds like a lot of birds in North America. Karela was at the time, the most famous bird in the world. Oh. 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 他ならぬ人間の手によって16世紀にヨーロッパからアメリカ大陸にやってきた探検家たちは空を覆い尽くすほどの鳥の群れを見たそれが旅行バトを記した一番古くて確かな記録 You know, because the Native Americans didn't feel like writing stuff Or their writings did not survive, I guess 私も本で知った知識だけど These days, yeah Well, I mean, yeah, seeing enough birds to block out the sky is like literally an Alfred Hitchcock plot, right? Imagine Good fertilizer? Probably. Maybe? I don't know. I mean, there were a lot of plants back then. I mean, I feel like it would change the pH value so much, it could destroy an environment if there was that much. Oh, yeah, but the environment was built on that. So, if anything, we destroyed the environment by taking away the pH of the bird poop. Maybe? I don't know. They were at that time. 森を破壊し人間を脅かす悪魔のような存在だった映像地は10キロメートルにまで及んで1コロニーにつき5万羽近い鳥の鳴き声が響いたのよ
一瞬にして風景を変えるほどの鳥の群れと世界を覆うほどの鳴き声冒険家たちがすくんだのもうなずけるわね一つの住みかに5万羽いや、yes, フェイスね。That would be a lot of birds. Sojiro trailed off as he attempted to count the number with his digits. <laughs> One, two, three, seven hours later. Yeah, lots. He could barely count the number of people in the crowd outside the station. This would be far beyond his capacity. Also, he only knew how to count to ten because he only had ten fingers. <laughs> でも話は簡単だったの。人間にとって旅行場とは脅威でもあったけど、同時に安価な実りでもあったから。シープ、like、you didn't really know what that is? は美味しいでしょよく鍛えられてるから。Oh, people ate them? そんな食材が空に向かって鉄砲を撃つだけでバタバタと落ちてきたとしたら、あなたはどうする I'd, I'd throw grenades into the air to get more of them at once. <laughs> まあ、身も蓋もないことを言えば、旅行場とって鳥は簡単にお金にできる生き物だ。Or, you know, food for winter. Actually, if these were, I mean, if these were like, you know, not large birds. Right, not super like, big. Firing a. 1800s era or earlier gun at them is I probably think just gonna destroy whatever meat you would have gotten. So, like,、uh, it would not be a smart idea. I imagine this is exaggerated, even if you were using spread pellets. <coughs> 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 oh boy, salted feathers. <laughs> They mean, she means pluck the feathers off and then salt the rest of the bird. Yeah, but she didn't change、yeah, subjects back. <laughs> <laughs> so they pluck the feathers, stick the feathers in a barrel with some salt, and he、I、goes, see,、yes. Here you go, salted feathers.、Yep. Everybody's favorite dessert. So they all cut it as a nakata. Tada no show he. Ningen gawa rodo no jikamo. Sagio no temasra kanji nakunate. Well, I mean, so no kora really just interpreting things. 1は1セントで手に入れることができたんだって。ここで言うのたった1円。I guess, kinda. 本当。信じられる。その国最小の通貨1枚で売買される命がこの地球にはあったなんて。Kumari spoke as if reciting from a textbook. Her voice nevertheless had a certain darkness to it. Was, was pity、it? for. Oh, well, yeah, I couldn't see the it.、Yeah. Was it pity for the slain birds or disgust for her fellow man? Or, you know, both? Yeah, could be both. Either way, the passenger pigeons' fate was a cruel joke carried out by humanity. Typical, some might say. Poor Sojiro had yet to comprehend just how typical that side of humanity was. Kedo, so there was Madame at Jono Kuchide. Hombam was Juku Seki and Hite the Karadata. Oh, yeah, we were talking 18th century. We were talking 1700s era、uh, muskets.、Yeah. Those are absolutely going to destroy the bird. Like, I mean, yeah. Can't imagine. Americans made you learn about that stuff in school? Damn right. <laughs> Listen, when we blow up two of your cities and then tell you how to rebuild, right, yeah. you fucking listen. Well, we wrote their constitution, so I、yeah. guess they had to learn about our history. でもっと最悪なことに人間は工夫する生き物だった
彼らはより早くより多くより簡単に旅行バトを乱獲する手段を競い合った目をつぶしたハトをおとりにして集団を誘い込んで一日で一万倍以上捕らえたやつさえいたそれでも彼らは乱獲に疑問すら持たなかった They... They would blind one pigeon. Yeah. And somehow this pigeon being blind was a lure for the rest of them. Are, I don't quite. Are know. they all like ophthalmologists or like. <laughs> I don't entirely know how that works. <laughs> but... All of the pigeons are eye doctors and they, they saw this blind bird and they had to help him. It was a compulsion. See. <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah, I guess so that's many, you didn't think about the supply ever running out. I guess that's true. Nobody was breeding with the pigeons. So <laughs> that makes sense. That we know of. She was doing everything she could to speak in calm, measured tones. Sojuro, meanwhile, was completely enraptured by her words. I can't wait for this entire episode to just be called, like, Kumari's lecture on birds. Yeah. Having been raised in the mountains, it was by no means a happy story for him, but right now he was more interested in knowing why it ever happened in the first place. Well, that too. So basically, nature selected them for extinction by not allowing them to be smart enough to find other ways of living. Right. Well, what, what, what are the... Uh, it's like... Um, what, the dodo or something? No, I, I, there's like... It's like evolve. There's like a three or four like thing for you know like when you run into shit like this in the wild and you gotta like uh, it, it's like adapt, evolve, or extinction or, or something like that. Uh, okay. <coughs> for the the thing, and this was like fucking I don't know biology and. Tenth grade. Remember that shit? That was. Boy. Man. Almost 20 years ago. Yeah. My god. Karera got Gojuok no old Koko Kizuketano, so they might attend the Kiga Inakata Karanan de Shone. Send you mean the other Indian. Karera, Lanka Kurkoto, Nakata to Yoshi. By not great numbers. Kedo New Shok Shatachiwa. Also, was it an empire? Did, did they have an emperor? Uh, did, did, not really. did, did we treaty with the emperor of the passenger pigeons? Nani,あの飛び立たしい数の鳥が絶滅するなんて夢にも思わなかった。旅行バトにしたら聖天の霹靂をまさか何世紀も遅れて海の向こうから天敵がやってくるなんて。well, that's their fault for not having the foresight to think that people might be dicks. <laughs> yeah, or that any so other predator in the environment. environment. And the government was like, hey, quit shooting the pigeons. And people were like, but dinner though. Yeah. Something like that. So, the hunter Tachua told his size in the Gijutsu. Then pulled the Yoko Bato Tachino Shosayo Shirasiate, 
実に20万羽の旅行馬と仕留め、四万羽傷つけた。生き延びたのは5000羽だけ。この時点で彼らは野生で生きられる種ではなくなったのよ。Okay. No longer able to survive in the wild. He knew all too well what that phrase meant. No wild animal can last long on its own. No animal can survive without a sufficiently large population of their fellow kind and sufficient feeding grounds to support the group. Right. Strength in their massive numbers was all the passenger pigeons ever had. So once that was gone, they were as good as extinct. In that they were extinct.、Oh, yeah. They went extinct! Yeah, I mean, probably in captivity. Yeah. That we knew of. That we knew of, yes. Right, like, But if they were、I、never seen in the wild again, we can probably guess that we were right. Yeah, probably, but not necessarily. I mean,、uh, I think just this year they found some. They found some creature that we believed had been extinct, and we're like, we found it! It's、uh, fine! It's not, it's not extinct! Well, we don't know how many of them there are, but we did find one, so.、Uh, cool! So, no, just then. 彼女は地上で最も孤独な生き物になった。You don't, you have no way of knowing. Well, to be fair, around the same time, I believe the Tasmanian tiger was also going extinct, and the last one was in captivity in Australia. So, you know. 名前はマーサ。マーサ。北アメリカを旅する鳥たちの最後の一羽でありながら、ただの一度も空を飛ぶことができなかったカゴの鳥。I mean, at that point, like, what's the point of keeping her in the cage? Because, like, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're the last of your kind. You cannot repopulate by yourself. Like, just let her go and have a, you know. Well, yeah. Have a fly around until Joe Farmer goes, Hey, dinner! Bang! Yeah. 29! That's insanely long for a bird. I'm sorry, do pigeons live that long? <laughs> Not to my knowledge. 1914年9月1日午後1時一つの種が終わる時間がここまで正確に起こっている。Boy, just wait until she tells him about World War II. <laughs> the, the birds had been swallowed up by the machinations of human civilization. Kumari had intended to show her sympathy for the lost species, but the emotional impact had clearly been all but lost on Sojuro. いや、すごい話だったけどその整理がつかなくて当時の人たちは自分たちの手で減らしておいたのになんで最後は保護したのかって。Humans are kind of weird like that. I don't get it. Weren't they trying to kill them? Why are they suddenly trying to save them? Because they wanted to kill more of them, Sojuro. <laughs> And if there weren't more of them to kill, they couldn't do that. I think that's really where most of our conservation efforts come from is we want that thing for that thing that it did, but we did that thing so that we、yeah. use them for that thing that they did so much that now they can't do that thing. So we need to keep them in captivity and raise their population so we can do that thing to them again. Basically, what we did to cows and chickens, but you know, for other species. Yeah. Kumari stared blankly at him, eyebrows raised high. What he likely meant to ask was why humans would protect the last of the species. They themselves had hunted into, ex 
didn't wow, you? Wow, that did not... That be... is a weird break. Yeah, that didn't need to be a break like that. Kamari could hardly be blamed for her bewilderment. Having been raised in the city, she failed to recognize the danger inherent in his clu Cluelessness. cluelessness. He felt neither anger nor tum toward humans no for their base selfishness nor sympathy for the birds who remained in their natural habitat even at the cost of their lives. His upbringing had not provided him with the necessary sense of self-righteousness to produce feelings in either direction. Huh? No, that's why he asked. Hey, <clears throat> just, just out of curiosity, Sojiro. I don't, I doubt it, because you've been pretty chill so far, but you weren't, like, raised in the mountains to be, like, a super assassin or anything, were you? You happen yeah. to be from, like, the same people as Kuzuki well, I mean, before I he it. murdered all of them? No, that was more of, like, an organized, like, civilized thing, but, um, he'd be more familiar with modern society if he was. Because then he'd be trained to blend in, you know? どんなに強く美しく見えても居場所から追われた生き物は吐かないってこと。しずき君、あなたが見た鳥はその最後の一羽かもしれないわよ。Might be. It also might not be a natural bird. It might just be a mystic code. Which I'm pretty sure Alice said it was. Yeah, I think it is. Or she said it was a ploy, at least. I believe so. Which, uh, yeah, it's a kind of mystic code, so it's probably just a construct. And with that, their idle conversation came to an end. I mean, it still might be the last of its kind, though. Could be. Because, like, it didn't sound like she had more of them. And it was... Yeah, it was ostensibly by created by her mom, so... Yeah, so... Might not be able to get more of them. It was nearly time for their shifts to begin, and Sojiro was the first to head off. Oh, that's not something you do a lot? I don't even like animals. <laughs> Kimari remained in the park after Sojiro left. Martha. Or Masa. Yeah. More appropriately. The last of her species. She'd not been referring to the bluebird when she mentioned Martha, but... Yame,やめ. You, you hear that, game collectors? Yeah. <laughs> it's not special just because it's rare, jackass. She rubbed the back of her head, apparently angry at herself for getting involved in something that was none of her business. She and Sojiro weren't even in the same class at school. She was a total stranger as far as she was concerned. Oh, you're definitely acquaintances. The more something bothered her, the more she felt compelled to investigate it. It was a personal quirk of hers, and the only reason she had gotten so worked up about the passenger pigeons. Mm. Kimari's well-groomed brow furrowed. Mm. She had only spoken to Sojiro to make sure he was doing okay at the Mad Bear. Maybe it was that she had been strangely drawn to him. Mm. The more they spoke, the more she felt drawn to him. I see, <laughs> her too, huh? <laughs> I mean, kind of? Amidst her muttered complaint, she recalled their conversation upon parting. To which he had given a weak shake of his head. <laughs> nope, not at all. Not even a little bit. <laughs> He was trying his best to keep up with the overwhelming <coughs> amount of new information every day. However, despite his apparent naivety and frailty, he was, in fact, trying to learn everything he could about his new surroundings. But, at the same time, there was no reason it needed to be so overwhelming in the first place. It was only due to his own naive, naively subordinate frame of mind that he felt compelled to memorize each and every detail. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I mean, I would say he's subordinate, but only really around Aoko, maybe. And maybe Alice. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, he has made her tea, like, twice. Well, yeah, but he did that on his own initiative, not because she ordered him to. He awkwardly claimed. So, ne? Demo. 
もしかしたらそもそも Just maybe Gamari stopped herself mid train of thought deciding to instead wave goodbye and take her leave <laughs> She sighed aloud every time she replayed the scene in her head Work at the convenience store started in five minutes She gave herself a light slap on the face in an effort to forget their conversation She reminded herself that she had neither the energy to worry about other people's problems nor the obligation to do so. She had her own concerns, saving up enough money for college, for example. Right. Fighting yeah. against her parents' opposition at every every night was draining enough. There was no room for burdening herself with other students' <coughs> issues. How dare you want to go to college? Well, you go the... straight into the workforce, goddamn you! <laughs> it was the 80s. Get the hell out of our house! <laughs> yeah. You know, for this being the 80s in Japan, yeah. there's a shocking lack of people wandering around in pompadours beating the shit out of each other. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Where the hell is Kuwabara? Or like any of the other delinquent stereotypes. Yeah. <coughs> It wasn't like her to get so tongue tied, she thought to herself under a strained smile. ほんとはっきり言ってやればよかった。あなたは単にそういうのに関わる気がこれっぽっちもないんじゃないのかって。いや、he And Alice. Oh, she's awake this time. Well, she was awake last time, too. <laughs> yeah. When Sojiro entered the drawing room after work with a gift of sardines for his roommates, he came face to face with Alice sitting on the sofa. He actually brought them sardines. Yeah. Wow. Konbanwa, Arise. I brought you these salty fish. Yeah. I hope you like them. <laughs> The sense of familiarity to be able to say I'm home when entering the mansion still eluded him. Yeah. He headed straight to the kitchen to fill a bucket with water to keep the sardines fresh. Oh wow, fresh sardines. But the icy stare on his back sent him anxiously to the refrigerator instead. <laughs> oh. What? What? Why not the kitchen? Why? What? <laughs> Calmly accepting the change in plans, he shoved the sardines into the fridge and peeked back into the drawing room. Arisu, Aozaki wa? Sojiro, buddy, can, can we have a talk about your sensibilities here, my guy? <laughs> like, you are almost definitely closer to Alko. <laughs> Why are you referring to Alice by first name and Alco by give or by family name? What the fuck, dude? I don't know. Do they not treat you proper manners in the mountains? Uh, she could be in her room, or she could be literally anywhere else. I don't. I don't know or care. <laughs> yeah. Her reply was curt. Why is it every time you talk to me, you ask about Alco? <laughs> yeah. You ever think maybe you should ask how I'm doing? Maybe. He nodded and got to work cleaning the kitchen. There was nothing in particular he wanted to say to her, and also sensed that it would not be a good idea to start up a conversation needlessly. He's learning. So he tidied up the sink area, washed the cutting board, wiped down the knives, put away the cutlery so they could be easily found. Her black eyes monitored every action in his streamlined workflow. Hmm. A rhythm that even the most seasoned housekeeper would be envious of. He would surely notice her gaze before too long. He bent over to store a large pot under the sink when it happened. As he began to stand back up, he locked eyes with Alice, and then... What the fuck is that? Is that Robin talking? What, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> wow. Yep. Uh, did you learn to talk? 
before you can make <coughs> another move, no space. Yeah. He felt something slam into the back of his head. A bright shock of blue. Wow. Like, I know you faded out the other line and then made this a like, brighter color. Yeah, I get that. But... but you didn't put a space there. Yeah, it's slightly annoying. Before he could make another Mavehi. <laughs> he knew what it was, was without looking. It could only be the mansion's blue robin. It doesn't like how close you're getting to Alice, apparently. Yeah, it's very jealous. Sojiro muttered under his breath. It was a rare situation that made Sojiro feel like complaining. Okay, do uh, you actually talk? Or like, is... Are we just hearing your so thoughts now? Or is Sojiro just imagining <clears throat> what you're saying and we're in his delusional brain? Yeah, because Alice could sort of at least gauge what it was thinking. The robin chirped in its shrill tone. You see, this little creature that loved to attack Sojiro so was the greatest of the mansion's many wonders. Uh-huh. Really? Was L it? L little Tweety Bird is a greater wonder than the magical mirror that will trap you in Foreverland. Mm. And with good reason. <clears throat> What? I'm sorry. Are you trying to make this bird like Cockney or something? What are you doing? I have no idea what they're going for there. Like so. Sojiro had an inkling of what the bird was getting at, but he didn't know what a Richard the Third was. Uh, well, he shouldn't. So this can't be his interpretation, right? One would one would imagine, right? Like, uh, and also, why would he be giving the bird an English accent in his interpretation? Well, he probably knows Alice likes English fairy tales by this point. You having a bird bath, mate? Yeah, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> okay. Um. For someone raised in the mountains, this was an utter nightmare. Animals were not supposed to be able to talk. Oh, okay, yeah. Then again, having lived in the mountains for over a decade, he did sometimes feel like he could understand what birds were trying to say. He knew it was just his imagination, but sometimes he thought they even saw him as a friend. I see. Normal birds, this is. He, he did, like, musical numbers with them. Yeah. And, <laughs> are you a fairy tale princess? What the fuck, man? <laughs> that was not the case with this bird. Tojiro had a realist attitude toward wild animals as a result of being so familiar with them, in contrast to the ever-mysterious humans who lived in the city. As much as he wanted to deny the reality he was facing, he could not help but recall Kumari's story. She'd said to try and be nice to the bird the next time he saw it. Yeah. According to her, any rare or one-of-a-kind creature must accordingly feel very lonely. Okay. The bird perched itself on the telephone receiver. No, that's a table. What's well, next to the receiver, but It's yeah. not on the... The receiver's the bit at the top oh, yeah, that yeah. you do the talkie into. Ah. For, for one thing, and that's definitely a table. Yeah. <laughs> Seemingly worn out from all the flapping. Now, Sue, do you know whatever telephone receiver is? Well, they might just be taking text from the novel when drawing something that doesn't match. Sojiro was dumbfounded. Listening in silence to the bird's chatter was his way of expressing his denial. Right. I can't answer it or else it, it's real. Right. And now it's a pirate. Well, like, I count on me long career as a ploy. I, I mean, pirate and cockney isn't that different. Got it, <laughs> yeah, his creator. I, I want to know why you're blue. Please, elaborate. Why are you blue and why do you have stars? Yeah. 
でも探偵である自分が真っ先にコロコロするんで誰が自分を殺したか結局誰もわからねえっすあオッケーイ What? I have no idea. プロイ、待ってくれ。それには聞き覚えがある。プロイって何なんだん何なんだと言われても困るっす。エロいとか、役いとかの最上級じゃないっすかじゃ、セクシーああ、好<笑>き。好き。好き。好き。好き。<laughs> Thusly, the conversation began between the two most powerless residents of the Kuonji estate. Humankind and birdkind. Able to. Able to. Hang on a second, continue. Understand yeah. one another, after all. <laughs> wow. Sodro was tired of letting the bird get to him, fully aware that ignoring it took more energy than it was worth. Filled with a sense of resignation, by the time he finally did make an attempt to interject, both parties' guards were firmly down. Sojuro was focused on how rare the bird was, while Robin was focused on his showdown with his rival that was to be eliminated at all costs. <laughs> yeah. Angel Mom. <laughs> As opposed to the Goddess Mom. Right. What, what would that make Alice's grandma? Like, the progenitor mom? Yeah, maybe. Tia, Ma Tia Mom. <laughs> <laughs> nice halo. Nanto, Aris the Tenshinaka. Oh, God. <laughs> Is he taking that seriously? I mean, sure, why not? Everyone seems to treat her like one, so I guess fair play. It was an impressive sign of progress that he didn't need to ask what an angel was. Yeah, that's pretty impressive, actually. Yes, <laughs> That's Robin's angel, huh? I bruv. Arisさんは神聖不可侵にして冷酷非道。ま、夢が見てあったところの母君とはちょっと毛色が違うっす。You've got a real step on me fetish, don't you, Robin? It really, really seems like he does. 正直、母君。Now, now you're just being rude to goddess mom. What? <laughs> uh, what kind of asinine question is that? Of course she did. You think she just popped into being fully formed? Well, now I'm wondering, does he have parents? Does he not know that's... Where babies come from? So Sojiro. I have a Sojiro. Buddy, we need to have a chat about <laughs> yeah, go, go back and talk to Kamari about birds and ask yes. her about bees this time as well. <laughs> right. Maybe she can fix you. Maybe ask well, you know, ask Alko you know, where babies come from. That'd be fun. I thought maybe she didn't have any family at all. I mean I mean living family, maybe. But to not have any full stop. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. It's definitely speaking this kind of accent. All the birds in England cried out. Uh, you have photos of her mom? Six pence. <laughs> How do you have pictures? You were a bird. <laughs> How do you have pictures? <laughs> what? What are you going to do with oh. sixpence? And how is he supposed to get that in Japan? And why are you selling pictures of Alice's mom? Because they, because Robin can make sixpence off of it, obviously. 